Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Rachel here from Makers Gonna Learn, your ultimate die cutting community. If you're not already a member of Makers Gonna Learn, you are really missing out. We have over 1400 digital cut files, over 250 fonts, free commercial licensing, a free printable guide, and members only Facebook group, and so, so much more. If you wanna get in on the fun, click the very first link in the description below. Today, guys, we're gonna be making three awesome Christmas stockings uh, in three different ways so that you guys can personalize them with your Cricut. So the holidays are coming up very, very fast. They are going to be here before we know it and we want to get creative with our stockings. So today I'm going to be doing three different, three very different styles of stockings today to give you guys some examples on how you can create them at home. The first one we're going to do is we're going to iron on the body of the stocking and then we're going to get a furry stocking like this. Some of these are definitely in style this year and this fur can be a little intimidating. So I'm gonna teach you how you can iron on this fur uh, without any worries at all. And then with this last burlap stocking, we are actually going to use freezer paper and stencil a beautiful snowflake on it. So uh, this is three different styles, three different ways to customize your stockings and I can't wait to jump into this video. First things first, guys, let's head on over to Design Space to show you what we've got cooking up for all these stockings. But before we do that, we're going to measure these just so we have a number in our mind uh, as to how long and uh, wide these are. So this first one is about the, the biggest width we can go is about four and a half. And of course, height really doesn't matter. So this one's four and a half. This plaid one here, we can do, I would say five and a half. And then for a little snowflake over here, the biggest we need to do is five and a half also. So we need to think about four and a half and five and a half. So now let's head on into design space. Okay guys, here we are in design space and we have our three uh, little decals here. This is a cut file for a Maker's Gonna Learn. This is a cut file and this is a font. So we just took the font called Ballin and we created this right here. This is a super easy uh, little word here. If you guys are anywhere new to design space, if you know what you're doing at all, you know how to current your text to make a little word here. So we have got a uh, uh, Sally, the name Sally here, and we're going to put this on the fur of that um, uh, stocking that has the buffalo plaid on there. So we're going to make this about five and a half inches um, wide. So we're going to go up here to width and we're going to type in 5.5 and that makes our height 2.56, which is a fine height. And now we're gonna move on to our snowflake. So we know that we have four and a half, or excuse me, we have about five inches to work with this snowflake. So we're gonna go up here to width and we're gonna type in five. And that makes the height 5.53, which is totally fine. And now for Big Ben over here, we know that we have four and a half wide for this stocking. So we're gonna go over here again to the width and we're gonna 4.5. And that makes our height a whopping nine inches. So let's see if that will even fit on our stocking. I'm just kind of holding it here and checking. And surprisingly, that will fit on our stocking. So we're gonna go with it. So once you have all of these sized, what you're gonna do, since they're all gonna be made out of different things, we're actually going to take each of these and turn them a different color. So I'm gonna turn that one. Let's turn them into that, the actual colors that we're gonna be cutting. So that one's gonna be red. Uh, this one, I'll do this one gray for um, freezer paper. And then I'll do this one, uh, if I can go over here to the color, this mouse here, guys. I'm gonna do this one white because we're gonna be doing this Miss Sally in white. So now, guys, we can go ahead and click make it. And this is an iron-on project. All of these are going to be iron-on projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror um, these. So now for the freezer paper one, it really doesn't matter. Mirrored, unmirrored, it's gonna look the same. So I'm just gonna mirror it. You don't have to mirror it. I and mean, it looks the exact same either way. So it really doesn't matter for that. So now we're just gonna click continue and we're gonna set our material for the very first mat. So the first mat you can see is gonna be our freezer paper up here. So we're gonna go, I thought we had, might have had it favorited here. We're gonna browse all our materials we're gonna to go to freezer paper. So I'm just gonna type in freezer, freezer paper. I'm gonna go ahead and favorite that too. I love the favorites feature there. 
got the freezer paper. I'm going to set that to a little more pressure. As scary as that is, I actually I think I'm going to just give that default pressure. I don't want to I don't want to make it, you know, too bad. So now we're going to head over to the other camera and I'm going to load that freezer paper into our machine. Okay, guys, we have just cut out a piece of freezer paper here and laid it on our light grip mat. And now we're just going to load it into our machine. And we're going to press that flashing cricket button. Now that that's completed, we're just going to unload the mat. And right here is our snowflake. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our Cricut True Control knife and we are going to cut around our snowflake here. We're going to give a little bit of uh, room on the edges. I wish I had thought ahead and gave more room on this edge here because it's going to be pretty tricky to lay that down. But we're going to carefully bring up our snowflake, we do not need the inside piece to our snowflake, however, so that can stay down. We can go ahead and pick that up. And we're gonna pick out that inside piece. Our Cricut did not cut it perfectly, which is why it's wanting to, it's wanting to fight us a little bit. And there's that. We're gonna set our mat aside and bring in our stocking. And we're gonna lay this down right where we want it. So take your time, especially when you're positioning this, you know, it's the, this is the time to be picky. So once you kind of have it where you want it, you kind of see the vision of it, we're going to take our mini easy press here that we have heated up and we're just going to lay it down piece by piece. Now, now once you have it down, you can put the easy press over the entire image here and make sure that it is well adhered down. We want a good seal on this burlap here. We don't want any of this coming up on us. So, now that that is done, you're welcome to save this piece for another project. If you want to do like a reverse to this, that would be super cute too. So you can save this or you can toss it, whatever you would like to do. And we're gonna let this cool down for just a minute and then we'll get to pouncing. Okay guys, so here we have a little plate here and we just have some Americana acrylic paint. Um, so we're just gonna put a little bit of this on our plate here and we have a little makeup sponge. You guys can use a pouncer, a makeup sponge, whatever you like to do. So you're gonna dip your brush or your pouncer or your foam, whatever you will have. You're gonna dip it in the paint and then you're gonna kind of tap it a couple times on the plate so you can get some of that excess off of there. And now we're gonna go up and down motions only right on this stencil. So I'm gonna get in really close for us so we all can see really, really well. So we're just gonna do, we're gonna get a little bit more paint here and we're gonna do up and down motions. Just gentle up and down motions on this um, stencil here. We do not want any kind of crazy motions because we really wanna get a good result. We want some good crisp lines. And guys, here's the thing. Aiming for perfection is not the goal here, okay? We have to think about the factors and the factors are that this is burlap. And the um, burlap is not a perfect fabric anyways. It has lots of holes, lots of little crevices and things like that. Therefore, this job will probably not end up perfect. You're probably not gonna see some insanely crisp lines here, but that's okay because if you want a burlap stocking, then you're okay with a little imperfection anyways because burlap is very um, imperfect, you know? It's got its... It's got its flaws for sure in the fabric. So just keep dabbing that just slowly. You just need a little bit of paint on your pencil. You really don't need to overdo it on that paint. Make sure you're going straight up and down. And we're just gonna move right along here. And the beauty of this is that you don't really have to wait for this to dry to remove the freezer paper. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You can go ahead and remove it. You just have to be careful. But once you're done pouncing, you can remove the freezer paper, which we will demonstrate for you, of course, so that you can understand the proper technique to do that. And then once that's done, you can set it aside to dry and just move on to your next project like we're gonna do. So take your time up and down. If you guys were wondering, I had the Cricut Easy Press set to 315, but it really doesn't have to be that hot whenever you set your freezer paper. 
Uh, you just want to make sure that you lay your freezer paper down on the stocking on that shiny side, okay? You want it to go shiny side down like we do iron on on our Cricut mat because shiny side down, that is that waxed layer and that wax is what's going to um, melt and adhere to the fabric of the uh, burlap uh, so that we can get our little seal here for our stencil. So I sealed just a little bit over here. And now is the time where you want to go through the project and make sure everything is covered for the most part. And if you're satisfied with all your lines and everything like that, you can move this aside. And here's what happens, guys, okay? So we're going to start on a corner here. We're going to start on a corner and we're going to peel this up slowly slow and steady wins the race so you can start on two corners and peel up what you don't want to do is have any paint on your hands and you don't want to get the wet paint that's on the um, freeze paper anywhere else on your stocking so you're going to take two corners i want to pick these two and you're just going to peel this up slowly and there you guys have it let me widen this out for you guys so you can see the finished project. But look how cute this stocking is. This was with freezer paper. I know that a lot of people might get discouraged and think, well, I don't really know what to do with a burlap stocking. This is what you can do, guys. It's so, so cute. If I was you, we have so many cute snowflake files on Maker's Gonna Learn. You could take all different types of them, cut them out in freezer paper, and freezer paper stencil them all over so it looks like a little a uh, snowy wonderland here. You can put some on the caddy corner, some on, you know, put some halves on here and just fill it up with beautiful snowflakes just like this. But this is just one of three stockings, guys. So let's go ahead and head into Design Space and cut out our second stocking. Okay, so here we are, guys. And the second mat that we're gonna cut is our white iron-on that says Sally. So we're gonna go and switch our materials here because uh, we are not using freezer paper. We're gonna do everyday iron-on and we're gonna give that some more pressure. And now all we're gonna do is load that into the machine. So here is our finished cut image right here and you can't hardly see it because of this mat here. But, and there's our easy press that's heated up nice for us. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut around this here and remove all this excess. You have a big chunk of excess, which is great. And now we're gonna go in here with our weeding tool and just weed out our Sally here. And we have preheated the Easy Press back up to 315 degrees, just to let you all know. Um, and we're gonna be ironing on fur today, on this uh, fur on this stocking. So if you've never ironed on fur, or maybe you've been curious to iron on fur, you've you know seen some stockings and you've really been wanting to uh, you know go to the next level and iron on that fur, well, today's your lucky day because we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. So here is our stocking here. I'm gonna get us a little closer so you guys can see what's happening. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to go ahead and pull all your fur one way. So we're gonna pull all our fur down. And now that you've pulled that fur down, we're gonna take our Sally, okay? And we're gonna lay it right where we want it. You can press that in a little bit there and you can see that's right where we want it. And now what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take our Teflon sheet and we're gonna lay our Teflon sheet right over there. And now guys, we're gonna get our Easy Press and we are going to place it down and we're gonna give nice firm pressure, okay? I'm gonna put some forearm into this. I'm gonna get some good pressure going because pressure is key on this thick fur. You want all of that HTV to adhere to that fur nicely. So that is what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna give this good, even pressure, a good amount of it. And the trick to this guys is going to be waiting for it to cool long enough to be adhered properly, but not waiting to peel it up until it's cooled completely. Because that being said, this fur here, guys, it is gonna want to come up. You're gonna think it's gonna wanna come up with your uh, fur. Um, or excuse me, you think that your HTV is gonna come up with your fur, but it is not. So, and this is pretty thick fur, guys. You know, this isn't, you know, just a little bit of fur. So we're gonna let this cool just a little bit. And I can see the bubbles, which is all a good sign. So we're gonna just let this cool. It's still pretty hot. And once it gets to the point where you can touch it and keep your hand on it without, you know, feeling a little bit of pain is when we're gonna start peeling that off. Cause we want this adhered, but not enough to want to stick bad. Because when this 
cools down completely, it's gonna be a lot harder to peel that HTV off of that backing. So now we're gonna go in here and slowly peel. Let me get in even closer for you guys, okay? You can see this happening, okay? Slowly peel that back. Just be careful. And voila, okay? It might look like a mess now, okay? But you just go ahead and lay that fur where you were gonna lay it anyways. And you can see that fur coming on the inside of those letters, but those letters are not coming off, guys. Those are adhered down. It's just moving a little bit because it's on that fur. So this is our uh, second stocking, second of three. And this one looks adorable. So now you can have a personalized stocking that has fur on the cuff and not even be worried about iron on. So that is a great, great tutorial and we were so happy to show you guys. And now we're gonna move on to our third and final stocking. Here's our third decal guys and we're gonna go ahead and cut, or excuse me, we're gonna go ahead and weed this out. So here's our little bitty piece of scrap guys. I don't know if we can do much with that, but that's why it's called a scrap bin because you don't think you'll be able to use it. So now we're gonna go through here and weed. And the Easy Press is still set to 315 for us. And we're gonna do a little trick to help ensure that our stocking will take this uh, iron on well. We are gonna be using that Teflon sheet again. We do enjoy using the Teflon sheet for things like this, although it is not necessary. So if you guys don't have a Teflon sheet, no worries. Don't feel discouraged or anything like you can't create this. You absolutely can create this. Even if you don't have an easy press, you guys can create this with a household iron. Don't feel um, restricted like you have to use just what we have because you don't, you can use what you guys have. All we are here to do is inspire you guys and help you guys to make these awesome projects. But that does not mean you have to use all the same tools that we do or anything like that. Definitely make it your own. Definitely use what you have because um, every crafter is different and we love that. So just take your time here. Weed out these little pieces. Tanner would definitely be using the pin pin tool and I would too. It's just the some of these pieces aren't very small. And I feel like the pin pin tool is very, very good for super small pieces, uh, not as much for bigger pieces. So I'm gonna continue to use this Cricut tool because we're almost done. So once you have all this scrap, go ahead and toss all this in the trash. A clean work surface is a happy work surface. And now we're gonna peel this up and you can see the finished product here. It's really, really cute. So we're gonna bring our stocking in. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a roller brush, a little uh, lint roller here, and we're gonna lint roll this guy. So we're gonna get all this lint off of him, all this fur and everything like that. We're just gonna make him clean. So we don't want anything on him. So we're gonna get him nice and, nice and lint rolled. And once that is done, it looks like air, Stocking is off center a little bit. So I'm trying to pull that back to the center here so that I can be sure I'm placing this correctly down. And now I'm gonna preheat my stocking all the way down here, all the way down the body of my stocking. This is gonna look so cute, guys. And this is a simple size and cut cut file. It is not a difficult file at all. So now that that's warm, we're going to position this where we want it and be mindful of you know the stocking and the look of it and everything like that. So that looks beautiful. So once you have that down, we're gonna use our Teflon sheet and we're gonna hit this twice. So once at the top, go ahead and hit that button and give good even pressure. You don't have to give it as firm as you did with the fur stocking, with the fur cuff stocking, but give it some good firm pressure. So go ahead and we're gonna let this time down then we're gonna do the bottom and then we will revisit. And now we're gonna just place that Cricut back on its cradle and remove this Teflon sheet. And you can see that it still needs some time to cool for sure. 
but it's looking so, so cute, guys. This red is looking adorable with the other red. And of course, you could do this a different color if you wanted to. It does not have to be red. It's whatever that you would like to do. So once this cools a little bit more, we don't want to peel it off too, too soon. We're just going to remove this, and then we will have finished our third and final stocking. But guys, you have to leave me a comment and let me know which one was your favorite. I don't know if I could pick one. They were all different, and they were all so unique. I love them. And this one, guys, I love the pom-pom. Pom -pom. And if you're wondering, before you guys ask, we got all these stockings at Hobby Lobby. This one was $8.99. The um, burlap one was $8.99. But the buffalo plaid one with the fur um, cuff was $12.99. So that one was a little bit more expensive. But with that 40% off, it really saves you guys a lot of money. So now that that is cool enough, we're just going to peel this up. And of course, guys, it adhered flawlessly. So this is the last stocking and it looks great. I love this little tassel here, this little pom-pom. So here's our third and final stocking. Well guys, what did you all think about these awesome stockings? I don't know if I could pick a favorite. I think they're all really, really cute and they're all super, super different as well. This one we ironed on fur, this one we used freezer paper to make a stencil, and this one we ironed on the body of a stocking, all using some different types of SVGs, this one being a pre-cut file, the, uh, this one was a monogram, and this one was a really simple uh, dingbat that was a snowflake. I hope that you all enjoyed this video, guys. As always check us out at the links below again if you haven't already signed up to makers gonna learn to see all of these cut files and fonts and over 1400 more you guys are missing out definitely go take the plunge and enjoy that membership today give us a like guys and leave us a comment down below if you have any questions hit that subscribe button to get notified for all these awesome videos when they come out and as always guys stay crafty bye